Hello everyone, welcome back to my assembly language programming series. Uh, today I want to take a look at the com file format. Now the com file uh, has nothing to do with, with .com or the net. Uh, it was just an old um, executable format, uh, the earliest executable format for DOS. Uh, extremely simple. In fact, it didn't even have a program header. It simply had the binary blob of the program. The operating system DOS would load it into, load it into 100 hex uh, address, which is 256 bytes in, and uh, would just start executing. The program uh, in the earliest days, um, the uh, data segment and uh, source segment registers needed to have the same value. So uh, you could only address 64 kilobytes of RAM. The program had full access to the entire system, uh, the disk, the RAM, the processor. There was no memory management unit in the early days. So uh, I want to take a look at an example of a 16-bit uh, program, uh, a COM program, and I created HCOM. So we're going to take a look and see it. Uh, what one looks like. So I'm going to take a look at phasmd, hello.asm, and uh, you can see that uh, we have now in assembly language, uh, in essentially every assembly language, there's going to be actual instructions and then there's going to be kind of pseudo instructions. Uh, this org uh, in instruction is kind of more of a pseudo instruction. It's an instruction for the assembler itself to tell it something. And uh, the org instruction says that uh, the origin of this program, where it's going to be located in memory, is 100 hex, right? And then this U16 is a pseudo instruction telling the flat assembler uh, this is going to be a 16-bit binary. So you're going to create a COM file. Um, so here we can create a label. Um, and this label is actually going to be the length of this string that we've got here. Um, or no, no, no. Actually, this label is telling us we want to display the text. So in DOS, uh, interrupt 21H or 21 hex uh, is where all the DOS services live, right? And so typically what happens is you load the, the high bits with a certain value, and that tells you what operation you want to do. And then you load either the low bits or some other registers with information that you need, and you call the interrupt uh, 21 hex, and uh, that um, that calls the interrupt handler, uh, which is DOS. Uh, the DOS operating system then looks at the registers and says what you want to do. So we can see that this display text nine stands for we want to display text on the screen on the screen. So we load that into the high bits AH, and then of course DX contains. Uh, is needs to contain the address of the string that we want to print. And then when we call 21H, that will call DOS and then execute this uh, printing of the string. Um, then, of course, at the very end, we can call uh, int 20H, and that will exit the program. And that's kind of the method that was used very early in DOS. Um, after around DOS 2 or so, there is actually another recommended method to exit, which we will take a look at later. The only last thing that we want to see here is uh, the this label, hello. Um, we're declaring some bytes, and then we can declare a string here. Now, the very interesting thing for the early, very early version 1.0 of DOS was how you terminate the string. And so notice here that we have this 24 hex. And if you look up the ASCII value of 24 hex, or hexadecimal, you'll find that that's actually the character for the um, dollar sign. And so early strings were actually terminated by a dollar sign here. Um, not zeros like we normally do today in C and many other languages. Um, so this is actually very interesting to, to end your uh, string with a dollar sign. So calling... Um, uh, so calling this function, it looks for the dollar sign to end your string, which is a very interesting thing. So uh, this um, this is essentially the program. So we can we can compile it by going phasm uh, hello dot asm, and it will compile and it compiles to a 22 byte uh, binary file called hello.com. 
and we can see that here. So we've got now we've got hello.com. And the interesting thing about uh, DOS and even in Windows today, you can type in the name uh, of the program without the extension. So I can type hello here and hit enter and it will print out hello there, right? The, the actual uh, program or, or the actual string that we had. Um, I could also type in hello.com uh, and that will do the same thing. So just so you know, um, there's a couple different ways to call the program, but that's kind of a nice shortcut way. Uh, eventually we will have ex executables or exes and they will be able to be called the same way. Now, the other thing I want to show today is uh, the debug uh, program. So from DOS, I believe five onward, uh, debug was a program that came standard with DOS. So hopefully it should come with all of the DOS box stagings or maybe any kind of DOS that you have as well. The debug program allows you to, uh, well, it's actually a multi-purpose program. It, the debug uh, debug can actually walk through a binary to help you debug it. Uh, it can trace through the instructions. It can uh, disassemble a program. It can assemble program. You can actually write assembly programs with it. It's not very pleasant to do, but you can do it. Um, and uh, and uh, that's, that's mostly what you can do, but it's actually a multi-purpose program. So I want to show you exactly how uh, this debug program works. So if we type in debug and say hello.com, uh, we can actually debug this executable, right? This com file. And uh, it starts off with just an empty prompt here. Now, the thing is, is in order to use this program, you'll need uh, documentation, right? Which could be in a book, it could be online. Uh, but the program itself, as far as I know, does not have help built in. Normally you would be able to type in say help or H, uh, but that won't do anything here. Instead, you have to know the uh, commands and there's only maybe uh, 10 or so commands and they're all um, single character commands. So the one that we're interested in, the one that you will probably use the most, uh, especially in the series, is the T command, which means trace. And that means uh, what it will allow you to do is it will execute a, uh, a line of code. It'll show you what it is. Um, and uh, you can step through your program one line at a time or one instruction at a time. So I'm gonna do that here and it'll show uh, that um, the, exactly what our program uh, was written before. So we're moving um, an instruction in. And the other thing that you can see is the status of all of the registers. So notice you can see AX, BX, CX. You can see the values that are inside each of these registers. Now remember these registers are 16 bits. So you're only going to see four hexadecimal digits. That's 16 bits. Um, you can also see uh, down here on the second line here where we've got DS, ES, SS, and so forth. Um, at the very end, there are these two character um, strings that we see, and those are actually the status flags. And those tell whether we have overflows, uh, whether we have a zero value, and uh, other interesting things. So if you remember, I showed a web page that had the registers. Uh, also on that page, there is also a listing of uh, uh, flags that can be set in the flags register. And you can see those here. That's important for doing compares and other things. So let's just trace through the program uh, to the very end. Um, so um, another thing that's very interesting is that it won't necessarily uh, show uh, every single um, instruction. It kind of goes to the important instructions. So uh, we kind of missed out on uh, the first one there. But uh, int 21, it's going to call and it's going to print the string. And so we can see that the string was printed here. Notice that we have the print, and then of course we just, the uh, status of the registers are printed uh, directly afterwards. Uh, so that is it, and, at, and we're now at the last instruction, int 20 hex, and if we do uh, uh, trace here again, we will have the program termination. And so that's basically uh, how you run 
uh, the debug program. Now there's a bunch of other commands, like I talked about, you can actually just run, you can hit breakpoints if you want, or set breakpoints. But this is kind of the, the simplest thing. If you don't know what's going on, you can just trace through every line and follow through your program. And uh, that's a great way to debug. Uh, to, to exit, I believe, is Q, and that will quit the program. So that's uh, all I wanted to show to today. Uh, next time we'll actually look at the executables, um, the executable files, which allows uh, much larger programs. We can address more than 64 kilobytes, and that's where a lot of DOS programs have been created. So uh, thanks, and until uh, next time.